Good evening, everyone. I am Mark from On the Wrong Lead. It's only a couple days before the Saratoga meet kicks off for the year. And being the local Saratoga expert, I don't know, let me call myself an expert, I want to put out a video where I do a little bit of Saratoga for dummies. Um, getting a lot of questions from people about what's the big deal about Saratoga, why is it so important, um, the people who've never been, who want to come for their first time, they want to know some tics, tips, some tricks. So I wanted to put together a two-part video. The first part is going to be me talking talking Saratoga, um, where to go, where to stay, um, all a bunch of insider information. And uh, the second one will be me talking a little more handicapping, things I look for at Saratoga and how I sort of approach the meet. Um, this stuff should all be good. If you're somebody who's never been to Saratoga, only been once or twice or been 20 times, you're going to probably pick up a few tidbits here that you, you didn't know. So let's get rolling. What's the big deal with Saratoga? So the Saratoga Racetrack opened in 1863. It's the longest continually running sporting event in the United States. Um, the area around the Saratoga Racetrack, the city of Saratoga Springs, in the 1830s saw a massive influx of tourism. There are a lot of natural springs that have mineral water. People started turning, setting up bathhouses to bring in tourists to take baths in them, you know, medicinal waters that are the mineral water. Um, and it, the area saw just a massive influx of tourism. Uh, Saratoga is located about three hours north of New York City, so a lot of people want to get out of the city during the summer uh, and you know get out of the heat. And it's uh, like the perfect destination. You're going north. It's a little cooler. You either go to the Hamptons or you go to Saratoga if you're someone who lives in New York City and has the money where you can. Um, the Saratoga area is also a really great jumping off point to other adventures. Uh, just north of Saratoga is the Adirondack Park. It's the largest state park in the country. Uh, a lot of hiking, biking, um, kayaking, fishing, uh, you know, all sorts of adventure type stuff. Great, uh, there's a Great Escape Splashwater Kingdom, which is a huge Six Flags amusement park and water park. So ton of stuff to do in the general area around Saratoga. It's a great jumping off point to those adventures. And because of Saratoga being where it is, uh, a lot of tourism, and it became an area where there were a lot of people with a lot of money coming from New York City, predominantly, who were horse hunters. And they were competing Monday through Friday, uh, you know, in business, and they wanted to compete on the weekends doing other things. Uh, and those other things happened to be horse racing. So if you were an owner and, you know, well-to-do and you wanted to come show off your horse, you came to Saratoga because, you know, the Whitney's and the Vanderbilt's and, you know, all of those types of old money families, horse racing was the thing and Saratoga was the place you did it. Um, and Saratoga, you know, because of that, has become the place to really show off your standout two-year-old. Uh, if you have a two-year-old who's really loaded, you want to show it off in front of the biggest crowd you possibly can and really make a splash for yourself, you bring that horse to Saratoga and run him in some of the two-year-old races. It's, we're perfectly spaced middle of the summer where those two-year-olds are really getting going into a fall campaign pointing towards the Breeders' Cup. So if you want to see the two-year-olds in the first start who will most likely become Breeders' Cup two-year-olds, um, they're all going to basically run at Saratoga. Uh, and, you know, I think the, the most notable one of, of, you know, recently was Uncle Mo. Uh, he ran on the undercard on Travers, and Travers was on Saturday. On Sunday, the only thing anyone wanted to talk about was this two-year-old who won by, like, 25 lengths and threw out this massive fig and just destroyed what was supposed to be a very good field of other two-year-olds. So getting to Saratoga, getting here. Um, I know the map probably isn't the most clear, but Saratoga is right in the middle of the map there. On the bottom, you're going to see Albany. Uh, Albany is the largest major metropolitan airport. And I don't know if we're going to call Albany major. It's a pretty small airport, easy to get in, easy to get out. And the main road that goes north-south is Interstate 87. Um, I-87, uh, you know, flying to Albany, you can ca catch an Uber or a Lyft, um, or you can rent a car and drive to Saratoga. It's about a you know, 30 to 40 minute drive, depending on how you drive. Um, nice, easy highway driving, get off in Saratoga, you're right at the track. And what I wanted to, the reason I threw this up here is I wanted to make kind of note of a lot of the, of the towns along the way. You're going to hear me reference back a lot of places like Malta, Round Lake, um, places like Glens Falls, Queen Bar Queensbury, and Lake George as far as places to stay. 
Uh, the other way you, you know you can get into Saratoga, obviously driving, and the other kind of third option is there is train service into Saratoga Springs, but it's really sporadic. They only stop like two or three days a week. Um, you technically could grab a train from New York City and go all the way to Saratoga, but if you want to do the train, the easiest place is to go into Rensselaer, which is honestly right next to Albany. And when you get into the Rensselaer train station, rent a rental car and then drive north to Saratoga. So, you know, where do you stay in Saratoga? If you want to be able to walk to the track and walk downtown, you're going to pay big money. Um, expect you know, and a B and B that's walkable will be a thousand to fifteen hundred a night during the meet. Um, more around Travers. If you want to track rent for a week, that same B and B, it'll be again ten to fifteen thousand dollars for that sort of period of time. You can B and B stuff in Saratoga that is cheaper. There are apartments that you can get into for two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars a night. But the problem with those is they are not going to be walkable. And you know, if you're really thinking, geez, I want to be able to walk around, I want to be able to go have a few drinks afterwards, not have to worry about grabbing a ride home. Uh, Uber and Lyft are not the most reliable in Saratoga just because, you know, there, there's the, the interesting part about Saratoga is it's a 20,000 person town most of the year, but during the meet, it's not uncommon to have 50,000 people coming to town on a weekend. So the, you know, you get a four or five X increase in the number of total people and it just becomes a little crazy. If you want to visit the track and you're coming with people who are all into horse racing, you're going to be you know, at the races every day, I would highly recommend staying a little bit south of Saratoga. Um, the, some of the towns I mentioned, Albany, Clifton Park, Malta, all have major hotel chains in, in them, and it's very easy to get a hotel room. It'll be a quarter of the price of what you're going to pay in Saratoga. You know, your average hotel, again, you might pay, you know, off-peak Saratoga meet, you might pay, let's say, you know, you know, four or five hundred dollars a night, and you're going to be upwards of a thousand, sort of around Alabama or Travers, um, where you can stay in Albany, and you might be 175 or 200 dollars a night. So pretty substantial savings. If you're coming with a family and you might not be at the track every day, you might want to do some of those, you know, hiking, biking, all of the other things that are available in the area. Um, I would recommend staying a little bit north. Some towns like Glens Falls, Queensbury, um, even up as far as Lake George or Scroon Lake, getting actually up into the Adirondack Park. By staying there, you're going to be able to stay at much cheaper accommodations and you're going to be in areas where it's very easy to get to hiking trails, biking, canoeing, all those types of things. Um, and if you're budget-minded and you want to stay in Saratoga, you can get a little creative. Uh, I know I have a couple friends who are budget-minded, and they tend to stay at some of the hotels right next to the Albany Airport. That's one option. Another option is there are a number of campgrounds that are slightly east and slightly west of Saratoga. If you're cool with staying at a campground, there are companies that will rent you an RV, and they will literally drive it to the campground and park it in your spot. You don't have to drive it you know, around or anything, you just show up and you stay in an RV and you can do that for under a hundred dollars a night. So that can save quite a bit of money. The other thing is if you go east and west of Saratoga, towns like Schuylerville, um, and also towards the Great Sacandaga Lake, which is west of Saratoga, there are a lot of people that have B&Bs that are really nice. And again, you're going to be 150 bucks a night for a B&B that you're going to have, or even cheaper. I mean, I've, I've seen some of the ones in Schuylerville that are like 80 or $90 a night. You're going to be at a place where you're ha you'll have access. It's, you're still gonna have to drive a little further. You might have to drive 15 or 20 minutes, but you're gonna substantially save on cash. Um, now, where to sit, where to stand, all those types of things at Saratoga. This is always a, a big one, and this is going to take me a little while to go through. First thing, you don't need to pay to park. Uh, if you get off from Internet State 87, head, there is a gigantic sign that says Saratoga Racetrack. Get off at that one. Go towards the track. Take your first right. Uh, as you go down there about a quarter mile, Naira has a gigantic free parking lot. You can park for free, and they drive you from there to the track in a school bus. What you will see a lot in the media is people parking on lawns. Um, a lot of people who live in town will charge you know, 25, you know, anywhere from 10 to $25 per car to park on their lawn. Um, you can get closer to the track doing that, but you don't have to, and you can have a shuttle bus that'll literally take you to the entryway. So why pay the 25 bucks? Saratoga does have a 50,000 person attendance cap. They will 100% of the time cap out Travers Day, and sometimes they'll be close to the cap on things like Alabama or the CCA Oaks. Um, 
it's one of the few tracks in the country that does cap admission. So if you're thinking you're going to go to Travers and you're going to just show up at the gate and get entry, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that's just not going to happen. Uh, you will get turned away. So I'm going to go through some of the seating options from sort of more posh to uh, a little more rustic. The most sort of posh one is the 1864 Club. It's a new building just past the start finish line. Um, it's really expensive to be in there. I think they get there's some of the rooms are 6,000 to 10,000 a day, um, but they're fully catered and you have staff and they're very, you know, a AC and it's indoors and everything else. Most of the people who are there are not horse racing fans. They're there to sort of be seen in there for the social scene. Um, it's a lot of new money that thinks if they spend more that somehow they're getting a better experience. And quite honestly, it's really stuffy and kind of sucks. Uh, the one thing with the 1864 of the club that is a little cool, they do have a bunch of tables around the outside where you can be right up on the rail and right up where the horses walk from the paddock to the track. Those are less expensive. They're still pretty pricey. You're going to spend a couple hundred bucks on one for the day, but it's a really good scene, um, really good views, but there are better options, and I just really can't justify anybody paying the money for any of the 1864 stuff. Boxes are amazing. They're almost impossible to get. You're not going to just be able to go online and get a box at Saratoga. You have to know somebody. You have to have connections, and for most people, that's just going to be an impossibility. Uh, the dining table seating areas. There are a number of what they refer to as terrace areas, and these are areas that are right by the finish line where you can sit, have food, have drink, and watch the races. They are very, very, very tightly packed. Um, you're going to have a very tiny table, so if you have a laptop or even the racing form, and you have like two people at one of these tables with a racing form, you're going to completely just have no space for anything. Uh, tables are very, very tiny little cocktail tables. And... They're nice. Um, food's pricey, drinks pricey, but you know, it, to me, it's a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. I just can't. I have a hard time justifying sitting there when there are so many other good options. And I will. I guess I need to make a note when I say pricey. Saratoga pricey is sort of like New York City pricey. It's you're going to spend, you know, um, you know, ten dollar beer kind of pricey. Um, then once you get the next step down is the clubhouse. I love to sit in the clubhouse, but there's a couple different options. You can actually, if you can get entry into the clubhouse, does not mean you have a seat. Uh, you can stand in the clubhouse, and I always buy clubhouse entry even if I'm sitting in the picnic area. And the reason is, um, you can you can just you can also buy grandstands for the same idea. But if you have clubhouse or grandstand access and it starts to really pour, everybody runs into the lower level of the grandstands, and you can't move, and you're around you know. 10,000 soaking wet people. If you can go up to the grandstand or the clubhouse side, you can get away from people, have a little more space. You're elevated because they'll keep running races if it's just a rainstorm. And you can actually see the track really well from up above. So I, I normally will, I, I buy a uh, clubhouse season's pass and um, oftentimes I'll buy clubhouse seats, but I, I don't want clubhouse seats every day, so I don't buy the season. Uh, the but if you do buy clubhouse seats just remember they're really small seats it's stadium seating you're going to be elbow to elbow with people but for the most part racing fans don't sit there for 10 races they'll sit there for maybe two so you're gonna have a lot of people coming and going between races and if you want to sit there it's it's not bad you're not going to have people all over the top of you the whole day um, next option is grandstand on top of the stretch. Grandstand and clubhouse are very similar. There used to be a big difference in dress attire. Uh, clubhouse used to be much more formal than the grandstand is, and they've pretty much la relaxed them. If you go into both of them, you can wear a t-shirt and shorts. No one's going to say anything. Um, as long as it's not a cutoff or you don't look like super short shorts or you don't look like a slob, you're good to go. Uh, the top of the stretch is a new area that Naira put in a couple of years ago, and it's actually pretty cool. It looks like box seating, and it, it is box seating. And they have a number of promos they run with Naira Bets, where if you are a Naira Bets person, you spend a certain amount, you can sit there for free. And they have areas with things like free drink and free food, or your drink and your food is partially included. It's a little more like um, going to a lot of sporting events. I know I go to a lot of hockey games. A lot of hockey games have all-inclusives where you know you get a certain amount of beers and, a, and certain types of food, and it comes with your seat. Uh, they do a lot of that, and that's become very, very popular. The only thing with the top of the stretch is you're at the top 
of the stretch, so you're quite a ways away from the finish line. If you don't care about that and you just want to see the horses go by, it's a great spot to be. A little more relaxed, a little more elbow room. If you're with a small group, three, four people, you can get your own box area, and it's a pretty nice place to be. Uh, and the next option is the picnic area. Saratoga Picnic Area is famous, and you'll see the picture I put up on top here. That is the running of the picnic tables, which is a daily event and is uh, it's a lot of fun if you're somebody who's comfortable running. It's also really fun to just stand back and watch the crazy. At 6 o'clock every morning, the gates at Saratoga open, and I'll talk about this later. You can do breakfast at the track, and they open the gates up, and it's free admission. What people do is if you want to get a Saratoga picnic table, there are two ways of doing it. One of those picnic ways is you line up, get there early enough, you bring a tablecloth with you, and when they pop the gates, you bust through the gates and you sprint for a picnic table in a good area. If you get a tablecloth on a picnic table, people won't take it off. You can then go back to your you know, hotel room, crash for a few hours, get there an hour before post, and your picnic table will still have its cloth on it, and uh, you have your picnic table for the day. So it's very competitive. Um, you have to get up early. On a day like Travers, the line will probably start at 3 a.m. to get the gates popped at 6. I'll get a little water here. So be prepared to, uh, to, to get there early and to hustle to get in for a spot. Um, there's another way of getting picnic tables, and that is Naira now has reserved picnic tables. You can actually purchase a picnic table for the day. Those picnic tables suck. They are what they refer to as the paddock picnic table area. It's behind the paddock. There's no tree cover. They're really hot. Yeah, you can get reserved, but people are reserving picnic tables tend to not be Saratoga real like diehard fans. They're sort of the casual fans that want the easy experience. Also, the picnic tables that are in that area are much tighter in spacing, so you have a lot less room. In general, I find it to be a, a not nearly as enjoyable of an experience. Now, if you do want a picnic table, if you go to Saratoga on a random Wednesday and there's nothing featured going on, you can probably walk in at an hour to post. If you walk around the entire picnic area, uh, you will probably find a picnic table. And just so people know about the area at Saratoga, probably 75 or 80 percent of the seating is picnic area. Uh, it's a very, it's like going to a park. It's just an open picnic area. Now, what I normally do is one of two things. I will either get clubhouse seats uh, for days, especially if there's any weather and I don't want to have to worry about running inside. The other option is I sit in the picnic area quite a lot. If you bring a camp chair, just a standard folding chair that pops out, um, you know, I have one that has a shoulder strap, real easy to carry. You walk in and you find a spot between picnic tables, set out that chair, sit down, you know, um, the nice thing about the picnic area is there's a number of jumbo screens all around it, and then there's little sort of kiosks that have regular televisions. You can sit in an area, watch a jumbo screen. You can walk up to the races. The area I really like to sit to and is kind of sit in and is kind of an insider place is right behind what they used to be the carousel. Um, they now call it the Four Star Dave, which is actually a seating area that has one of the I mentioned a number of the dining table areas. The Four Star Dave area is actually a really good area. Those are bigger tables, more room. And I think you can sit like six people at those tables. So if you have a group of three or four, you have tons of room. Behind that, there is an area of picnic table or picnic area that's got a lot of tree cover, so you get skid out of the summer sun. And the entryway to the paddock goes right through that area. So you literally stand, you know, race finishes. Five minutes later, you stand up and turn around and you watch all the horses walk into the paddock. It's a pretty cool experience and it's a really nice piece of real estate where you're out of the way. The final option, which is really awesome, I almost do it, I'll do it just about once a year. It's a little pricey though, is the paddock bar and grill tables. Um, right by the paddock on sort of the opposite side from where the, uh, the picnic area I was mentioning is, uh, and this is sort of towards the outside, there's a Shake Shack and there's an, um, a, they refer to it as the, the paddock bar. It's a tent, um, a big tent that's a covered area that has like 20 bartenders in it. Around the outside of that, there are a number of tables and you can reserve a table for the day. The tables are, I think, $400 a day, which sounds really pricey until you realize that's all-inclusive food and beverage up to $400. So effectively, the table is free. You get $400 of food and drink. Um, prices aren't crazy expensive there. If you have three or four people, you'll have 
you'll be um, I'm quite in the bag if you go through $400 worth of alcohol. Let's put it that way. Uh, it's, a, it's a good experience, lots of fun, real nice place to sit. And the thing is, you're surrounded like on three sides by the paddock with how it's shaped. It actually is like a little part that juts into the paddock area. So you, know, you can be there with a G1 and you have G1 horses that you can reach out and touch. It's a really, really cool experience and a nice place to sit. Uh, and it's a little bit insider because you have to... Um, you have to kind of, you have to go into the track. They do have a phone number. I don't know what it is. You can't call the regular numbers because that paddock bar is a separate entity from Naira and you have to go in and say, Hey, I want to reserve it, you know, in two weeks. And then they write it down for you. Um, so it doesn't get reserved out nearly as bad as other areas. And you can kind of get in there a little bit, a little bit more last minute if you couldn't find something else. So what do you do after the races? Well, Saratoga is a pretty happening town. Like I said, it's a 20,000 person town that has 50, you know, an extra 50,000 people on the weekends. And honestly, it's more than that. It's 50,000 people on the track. Probably only half the people that come to town actually go to the track. So add another 100,000 people. Um, Caroline Street is the main bar area in Saratoga tons of bars everything from really high-end craft cocktail bars right down to full-on cheap dive bars with pool tables um in everything everything you could want uh tons of fun great place during the summer it's just a crazy happening scene and it's absolutely insanity and a ton of fun because you have everybody from new york city and connecticut coming up to play and blow you know blow off steam on the weekends uh, Ciro's is a really cool place. It's right on the border between the track grounds and sort of the city, the town of Saratoga. Um, Sir, the, the Saratoga racetrack is very much nestled in town. Ciro's is right on the edge, and they actually have their own dedicated exit way. So you can walk from the track to Ciro's through this little slot in the gate, which is pretty cool. Uh, Ciro's is where you will find, if you are a big money owner and you had a big win on the day, they'll be there buying rounds of drinks for people. Um, a lot of jockeys will come there with certain owners and connections. I remember seeing Calvin Burrell there the night after when Rachel Alexandra lost. Um, things like that. You know, Steve Asmussen's in there a fair bit. A lot of trainers, a lot of connections that you might want to see. Um, and Saratoga, like I said, is very much a party town. Every place is going to be hopping. There's a ton of little local places that you can, if you want to get away from the scene. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a very happening scene. And that's why I did mention beforehand, if you're thinking about walking, Saratoga is a great walking town, but you also will run into issues that, um, you know, obviously that walking experience is expensive. So you have to sort of prioritize what's important to you. And Saratoga must-dos. I think these are some of the ones that people might not be aware of as much, even if you've been to Saratoga a few times. The first thing, Racing Hall of Fame, across the street from the track. Um, it's, you know, it's great. It's a lot of fun to go through. Tom Durkin is during, doing tours now, and that's a pretty cool experience to have Tom Durkin, who's just a horse racing geek and was the Naira announcer forever, uh, do a walkthrough. Right behind that is actually, I didn't put it on here, but Fasig Tipton. So when they are doing the horse sales, you can walk through and they have free champagne and you walk around and just don't raise your hand or you're going to spend seven figures on a horse. Uh, breakfast at the track. This is amazingly cool. I mentioned that six o'clock a.m. gate pop. When the gates pop at 6 a.m., you can also walk in and they have a buffet. And I think it's it's like 20 or $25. No, it's a little pricey for what it is. It's not the best food ever, but it's it's okay food. It's, it's decent, you know, breakfast buffet food. The cool thing is you're sitting in one of the terrace areas and you're, you can sit there and watch workouts at the track in the morning. Um, they have this year, Anthony Stabile is going to be the one announcing them. They've had other people do it in the past. You'll literally be out there and you know, a week before Travers, oh, hey, here comes a Travers horse doing a work and you can watch them live. Really, really cool. The other thing is you can float around the grounds pretty openly that time of day. So you'll see horses in schooling. If you ask, they'll normally tell you who the horse is. You can you know, normally tell them and be like, oh, that's an older male who looks like a monster and then ask and they'll tell you what the horse's name is. And it's pretty cool to see, you know, horses you've seen on the Kentucky Derby Trail um, um, re-gearing back up for their fall campaign and oh here they are at Saratoga and I can watch them do a workout live um, and I can remember a few years ago American Pharaoh was at Saratoga and did his workout and I was looking at a couple friends who were all very much insiders and were going boy they worked him pretty hard and then he flopped a couple days later so you can pick up on some inside info like that if you uh, if you do sit, go there for the morning works. Um, backstretch tour. If you go to the morning works, if you do search for Saratoga um, breakfast at the track, 
there will be a number in there you can call and they do backstretch tours. They'll put you on a like um it's a, a like a elongated golf cart and they will drive you around and give you a scenic tour of the backstretch, see all the horses. Um, you can't really get out and pet them unless you know people, but it's a really cool experience just to see all the barns. A really interesting part of Saratoga is the fact that something like only 20% of the horses on the grounds will actually run at the track during the during the meet. It's right in the middle of summer, so a lot of horse trainers want to get their horses north so they train better. A lot of horses train better in cooler weather. And so they'll ship them to Saratoga, and a lot of them will never actually run there. They'll just be there for the summer. So it's pretty cool to see just barns and barns and barns full of horses that go on for literally miles. Um, another one I always like to plug because it's a really great organization is the Third Race Call. It's organized by BEST, and BEST is the Backstretch Workers Association. And this is a fundraiser for them. And if you, it's $100 per person and they can do up to five people. Uh, you pay your $100 and they have a person come out and meet you right by the paddock. They walk you upstairs and you get to stand behind the track announcer of the day and watch them announce the races. Um, all the track announcers are really cool. Uh, I think Embriella is going to be the one for this year. You can sit there and watch him, you know, do his whole thing. Watch the horses come onto the track from the announcer's booth, which is way up high. It's a really cool uh, scene. Um, I did it with Tom Durkin a few years ago, and Durkin was like literally from the end of the second race, immediately after it ended, to the fourth race going off. He was just talking with us. He was just so chill. We walked out onto the outside. Um, there was an outside, like, you can walk onto the roof effectively, which is press only. He stood out there for like 30 minutes talking with us, and he had to like run back inside and do the next race. He loved doing it, and I think all the announcers are that way. I've never had Embraer do um, do it at Saratoga, but it's a really cool thing, and 100% of that, the proceeds of that go to the Backstretch Workers Association, which is a really good organization. Um, They've spent a lot of money improving things like, you know, putting housing in Saratoga for backstretch workers and that kind of thing. Um, Saratoga is sort of a weird meet. It's such a short meet that a lot of the backstretch workers, it doesn't make, and it's a very expensive area. It's very hard for them to get um, housing for the, the entire meet. And they used to just sleep in the barns. You'd always find people in haylofts. Um, but now, or there's some small makeshift houses. So now there's a lot more housing they've built in the backstretch. It's a lot better. And Best has done a lot of things to help those groups out. Medical care, um, they do all sorts of fundraisers, free meals for certain things. It's a really cool, good organization. And my last one, but not least, um, is Grab a Hattie's Chicken Sandwich. Hattie's just kind of an institute in Saratoga. They are right in the carousel um, area and um, they are chicken sandwiches that are like the size of your head and it's the best chicken sandwich you'll ever eat. Um, I know all the on the wrong, well, uh, Josh from on the wrong lead came up and I fed him one and then he decided I think the next three days that he needed one every day. Uh, they're very good. They're extremely tasty and they're very much a Saratoga staple. They're just something that you, you should be having. So uh, I will come follow this up with another video here, hopefully in the next day or two, talking a little bit about my approach to Saratoga, what I'm looking for in races, and how to target sequences that are going to make you money. Um, until that time, if you like this content, found it informative, you learned something, please like and subscribe. It means a huge deal to us. We do all do this for fun, and uh, any viewership we can get is a great thing. And until next time, good luck at the races.